Well, there are at least 450 known rock art sites that just in the Verde Valley. This was the most important one here, um, probably because there was a fairly large pueblo within a half a mile of it, and the creek was a, a natural pathway for uh, between Bellevue and the Rim area. But right here, uh, there was a, a post surgeon at the fort at Camp Verde in the 1880s, and he published a photograph of this around 1885. That's the first I know of that, that European people saw this. There were trappers here in the 1830s and 1840s that, who may have seen it, but they didn't, they didn't leave any record if they did, if they did. So our knowledge of this goes back to around 1880 or 1885. From about 1900 until 1992, this was a privately owned ranch that was uh, kept the public away from it. Mm -hmm. They did allow archaeologists to look at it in 1947. They weren't very interested in it. It wasn't. Its importance wasn't realized until the Forest Service obtained the land in mm -hmm. the early 1900s. What is this archaeologist wouldn't interested in? It? My own opinion is that back then archaeology was more of a treasure hunt than a science. Than a science, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Um, wow. Well, a lot of the states weren't interested. I'm from Maryland, and back in the 50s they had a big site. Uh, a Dina Indian site, burial site, that was found 20 foot down in sand. And it, it had, it had uh, treasures galore from pipes to any type of artifact you could think of. And they picked them up by the bushel baskets. Mm. And the two finders wanted to give it to the state of Maryland for preservation. And the state of Maryland said they didn't have funding and they really didn't need it. And their family sold it. And each one's family sold at least a half million dollars yeah. worth later, not counting some others that got some out of that site. Mm. And I mean, you're looking at a state that considers itself a historic state. Yeah. Oh, yeah? Well, so is there an indication that something broke off here, or do we think that this is the way it actually was when they came, when they it? Well, you can see some <coughs> things that, like that one, the head yeah. of it is gone. It looks like yes. it's thought that this rock here would have broken off of that at some point. Mm -hmm. um, this is a cultural site to today's Hopis. They are descendants of the Sanaguas who were here. So we basically can't touch anything here. Mm -hmm. um, so we can't even turn that over to see mm -hmm. if there's rock art on the other side of it. How often do they come here? The I don't know. Do they have a Bureau of Indian Affairs that oversees this? Yes. I this mean, is overseen by the Forest Service. Yeah, but I mean, we have a Bureau of Indian Affairs in Maryland that oversees... Yeah, the BIA sites. is very much involved with all the tribes here. The Hopi Reservation is about the size of Rhode Island, and it's embedded in the middle of the Navajo Reservation, which is the size of New England. And the two cultures are vastly different, and they don't get along very well. They're, they've never gone to war, but they've sure gone to court a lot. The Hopis predate the Navajos by centuries. Hmm. The Navajos migrated from Canada. They speak an Athabascan language. So they migrated south because of the hunter-gatherer just kind of made their way? Or it was I don't know. The, oh, interesting. I haven't read that yeah. much about the Navajos. Uh, the, the, the Hopis basically occupy the same country, the same land that they occupied before European contact. Mm -hmm. which I can't think of another Indian tribe that can say that. Huh. Most of them have been forced onto yes. reservations that, that are our construct, not theirs. So, <coughs> the, and the Hopis can say that they live where they all have always lived. Just surrounded by... Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Mm. That's, interesting. That's because we didn't want their land. Probably not. The Spanish tried to uh, convert them and were ousted in the really? late 1600s. So we're, they weren't up for the Catholic uh, religion. No. I read that the Mormons have had better luck than the Catholics did. Really? Yeah. There's many Mormonized Hopis. 
Could you go through that explanation of the, the solar? Sure. We're, we're talking about 11 of the images here, starting with, with that stair step image. And then there are seven circles that are part of, the, part of that. There are a couple of snake-like images. Those two, three corn plants. And the uh, dancers, we call them the dancers, the uh, summer, summer solstice marker. Is that deer or elk above? It sure is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One of those. Archaeologists won't commit, they just say they're, they're zoomorphic figures. We get shadows down from these two rocks up here. So tomorrow on the, on the equinox, this shadow will come down here and it will be just tangent to those two circles right there. And the other side of it, going back up, will be tangent to that circle. Like so. And that will mark the equinox. That spring and fall, so it looks that way. Uh, well, how did y'all learn this? How did y'all interpret? Well, uh, a fellow named Ken Zoll, who's a, an archaeological researcher, recognized that these these types of figures here are found in known solar calendars elsewhere. So he suspected that this one was also a, a solar calendar, and he was charged by the Forest Service archaeologist to come out here every day for a year and see what was going on with those shadows really? and he eventually tied it all together with uh, with that. If you read a book called Sanagua Sun, Sun Watchers that he wrote, he explains how he ties this to the farming season. Now how far are we from the creek that I can hear in the background? Well, it's just in those those I see where the green yeah. is. Yeah. Now where would they have settled and where would they have lived here? The nearest Pueblo to here is about a half mile east. And we call it Sacred Mountain. There were enough rooms there for maybe 150 or 200 people. So it qualifies in archaeology as a large Pueblo. Mm -hmm. They were irrigating five to seven hundred acres at the base of the hill where their where their uh, Pueblo is, and they were terracing some of the other hills here for agriculture. Um, they had a ball court at the base of their hill over there. It was a pretty well developed culture here. Prior to Pueblos, they lived in stone houses, and they, prior to that, they lived in pit houses. The parking lot where you parked, the brush around there has evidence of maybe 15 or 20 pit houses that really? are unexcavated. So they lived pretty much all over. During most of their time here, up and down the creeks and the rivers, there are habitations about every mile and a half. Leading archaeologists to believe that at any given time they probably had upwards of 5,000 people really? in the population in the Verde Valley. All Sinaguan? I can't Sinaguan. pronounce Sinaguan. Yeah. Sinagua, it means without water without in water, Spanish. Yes. It's a horrible name for them here in the Verde Valley yes. because they had the creek, they had Oak Creek, they had Verde River, Verde River um, and, Sycamore Creek. And Tuzagut is is a Sanaguan yes, yes, Pueblo, yes. and it's not far from a river. Is yeah, that Verde, the Verde River is, is very near there. Um, Tuzagut, Palatki, Montezuma Castle, uh, about 40 or 50 other large Pueblos were late in their time here. They built, they for some reason congregated in those and started building mm -hmm. those those large pueblos within 100 to 150 years before they migrated away. And that's all, that all is not understood why they went from pit houses to stone houses to uh, small pueblos and then they started congregating into large pueblos. And you'll notice that a lot of the pueblos are built in what seem to be defensible positions. Like mm -hmm. Sacred Mountain over here is at the top of a very steep hill. Tuzi Goose at the top of a hill. Mm -hmm. Bridgeport's at the top of a very steep hill. Mm -hmm. And nobody knows why. It's thought, well, these are defensible, so it must have been warfare. But the human remains that they've dug up here, very, very few of them show any sign of a violent end. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't really compute that they were scared of enemies when there's no evidence of enemies. So, there are many, many theories about why they migrated mm -hmm. away from here. And the climate would have been similar? 
similar, what probably a little wetter a little for most wetter, of the time yeah. they were here. It, we're told that the, the rivers and creeks flowed more water then than they do now. Okay. They, they're in the Verde Valley, if you start at Sycamore Creek and then go down to East Verde River where it comes in, that's about an 80 mile stretch that they occupied and it's about 25 to 50 miles wide and they virtually had an, a Garden of Eden yes, here, yes. but they migrated away anyway. Well, it may have uh, gotten drier? No one knows. Huh? No one knows. There was a, a, a long uh, drought a hundred years before they left, but it was a hundred years before they left, you know, so, and if you lived to be 40, you were a very old person. Mm -hmm. uh, so a hundred years would be several, gen a couple generations mm -hmm. at least, maybe more. Um, it's just not known why they, they go overpopulation or resource depletion, disease, warfare, mm -hmm. uh, crop failures. There are many, many theories about why, but no one can agree on any of them. Lack of work, huh? And the, the Hopis tell us that, uh, there, oh wow, there's a snake right there. Oh, yeah. Right there. Uh -huh. Oh my goodness, yep. you better get out of there. I'll move. <laughs> it looks yes. like a rattler, isn't it? Is it a rattler? Wow. Oh. wow. Well, I'm glad you saw that. Yeah. Someone might have gotten <laughs> bitten. <laughs> oh, it's pretty. Well, it wouldn't have been so pretty if you'd have rattled. Huh? No, no, we're from Texas, but yeah. Oh, you're uh, seeing bigger rattlesnakes than that, huh? Probably, yeah, uh, but I don't want to see them up close. There or here. Oh, yeah, he's wow. curious as to why we're even here. They had an official oh warning out this morning for <laughs> yeah. rattlesnakes on the news. Yeah, excuse me. Uh, well, he's rather slow, wouldn't you say, or yeah. it's cool weather? Yes. He's warm enough. Yeah, he is warm enough. <laughs> He's just moving slowly through.